Nice binoculars, Brainyard. How is the Midwest's Badlands National Park? We also heard it gets quite windy out there. Uh-oh, don't freak out, but there is a tornado in the foreground. Didn't bother checking the weather on your way out, huh? Just hop back in your car and head for less windy pastures. What's that? Your ride's gone? No fear, we'll send a car your way. But for now, Brainyard, you should start running. Haven't you heard? You can outrun a tornado, and you won't need superhero abilities, or spandex for that matter, to do so. We'll even tell you how. But before we get swept up in it all, Get it? Because of the tornadoes? Anyway, let's unravel the science behind Mother Nature's funnels. A tornado is a violently rotating column of air that extends between the Earth's surface and a cloud. Typically, a cumulonimbus cloud. Try saying that five times fast. Most last less than 10 minutes. However, larger ones have been reported to last closer to half an hour. Sure, 10 minutes seems like not enough time to do irreparable damage, but if you consider that tornadoes can reach speeds up to 483 kilometers an hour and spin across the ground for dozens of miles upon miles, then you might think differently. The EF scale, which stands for Enhanced Fujita Scale, was implemented in the United States in 2007 to measure tornadoes based on wind damage. By measuring wind speeds, researchers and meteorologists can report how dangerous a tornado may be. Interestingly, according to the EF scale, a tornado begins to cause light damage at 105 kilometers an hour. But of course, the risk increases as the spread of the wind does as well. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration reports that 60 lives a year in the United States are lost to tornadoes. That doesn't mean that farm folks are getting caught in the middle of them. These unfortunate numbers are actually the result of flying or falling debris that result from the high wind speeds. Only half of these cases are actually caused by the strongest and most violent storms. So, now that we've established that Mother Nature is a force to be reckoned with, let's discuss the formation of tornadoes. According to National Geographic, most tornadoes originate from supercell thunderstorms. Unlike a regular thunderstorm, a supercell contains a spinning column of air at its center called a vortex. As it grows in size, the vortex in the middle begins to tilt, siphoning warm air and moisture upward. Then it spews out cold, dry air towards the ground. It's this updraft of warm air that causes the vortex to swell with water vapor and resulting in a swirling funnel cloud at its center. Then and ta-da, a tornado is a Bruin. The United States is one of the countries that sees the most tornadoes in any given year. In fact, the area that sees the most is commonly referred to as Tornado Alley. This part of the country consists of the Great Plains, the Mississippi Valley, and you guessed it, Brainyard, the Midwest and all its bison-filled glory. The state of Florida alone sees about 12 tornadoes a year, more than any other state due to its hot, dry, and windy conditions. But no two tornadoes are the same. No, no, no. Each one is dependent on the environment's weather conditions and can vary in size, speed, even shape depending on the atmospheric temperature, pressure, and wind direction. Take the rope tornado, which gets its name from none other than its skinny-tailed end. But don't get it twisted. What do you know, another tornado joke. Its smaller size doesn't mean it's weaker. Then there's the cone tornado, which is the formation you're probably most familiar with from drawings or cartoons. These bad boys commonly roll across the plains in the central U.S., and because of their cone shape, they tend to leave a larger trail of damage. And to top off our list of Mother Nature's unparalleled power, there is the wedge tornado. According to meteorologists, wedges are some of the worst and most damaging tornadoes in history. The 2013 El Reno tornado is an example of this natural havoc. Because these are the widest formations of tornadoes, they can grow 2.6 miles wide during the height of the storm, creating irreparable damage to the center of the twister. Now, you will have noticed that we didn't use the word hurricane during this quick science lesson. That's because hurricanes and tornadoes are, by no means, the same thing. According to the University of Rhode Island's Hurricane Science Department, the main difference between the two natural phenomenons is where they form. Hurricanes form over water and tropical oceans, while tornadoes form over land. Another major difference between the two is how big they are. While tornadoes reach impressive widths and heights, hurricanes are much larger. Not to mention, meteorologists can give advanced warning to the conditions that are conducive to hurricanes. Whereas with tornadoes, it's harder to predict when they're going to happen. Scientists still aren't 100% sure on why and how tornadoes start, which is troubling, considering how frequently they occur and how much damage they cause. After all, wouldn't it have been nice to know that today wasn't the best time to watch 
watch the bison, but moving on. Now, if you thought there were just different formations of tornadoes, then hold on to your hats, because we haven't even begun to mention twisters made of different elements. A subcategory of tornadoes are referred to as minor whirlwinds. They're created when local winds start to spin on the ground and form funnel shapes. Commonly picks up materials such as dust, sand, snow, and dirt from the ground, thus becoming visible. They're much less damaging than tornadoes, but equally impressive. Then there's the water spout, an intense columnar vortex that occurs over a body of water. They form mostly in the tropics and subtropical areas like Australia, New Zealand, but there have even been reports in Antarctica. And to top off the impressive whirlwinds made by nature's elements, there's the fire swirl. Yeah, you heard me. A whirlwind made of fire. A famous example of this is the 1923 Great Kanto earthquake in Japan, which ignited a large city-sized firestorm. Makes you reconsider how unlucky you thought you were, Brainerd, doesn't it? For all we know, you could have been chased by a fire tornado. So, now onto the serious business. Can you outrun a tornado? According to HowStuffWorks.com, outrunning a tornado on foot is never a good idea, considering how quickly a tornado moves along the ground, which is typically about 50 kilometers an hour. However, Greg Carbon, the warning coordination meteorologist for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Storm Prediction Center, it's still possible. You just have to know what direction the tornado is moving. If you know these things, there's a good chance you can actually get out of the way, but Carbon emphasizes that you have to know these things. Your best bet is to outdrive the tornado. However, there are a lot of factors that go into a successful escape. While most tornadoes move along the ground at around 50 kilometers an hour, the fastest twister on record races across the ground at 117. So you can't count on outrunning a tornado at designated speed limits. Then there's the trajectory of the tornado. You may be counting on its tendency to move in a straight line, but they've been known to suddenly veer off course. But this is you trying to evade the tornado, Brainyard. Imagine there are some people who get a major thrill from chasing them down. But as the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention warns, do not try to outrun a tornado in your car. Unsurprisingly, 13% of the 1,200 people who died due to tornado-related deaths were in their vehicles. So are there some real-life stories of folks outrunning or outdriving tornadoes? Esquire magazine reported an anecdote of a 39-year-old man who was lifted a hundred yards by a tornado that leveled his Missouri home. Reportedly, when Rick and his son Craig felt the house shimmy, he encouraged them all to get into the tub since it was the heaviest piece of furniture in the house. Rick reports that when the tornado hit his home, it was like a big tidal wave hitting it. He says it was the loudest thing that he's ever heard in his life, almost like a 747 flying right above his head. Then, before he knew it, the tornado uprooted part of his bathroom with him in it. Rick remembers a lot of spinning, and before he knew it, he found himself lying on the ground with a punctured lung, three cracked ribs, a broken shoulder blade, and an ear that was barely hanging on. Ugh. Then there's the Arkansas couple who collided with a tornado. They reported that the sky got very dark very quickly, and before they could react, their truck and trailer were swept by the tornado. Luckily, the couple survived, but we can't say the same for their truck and trailer. You can even watch the video on YouTube if you're curious what it's like to be swept up by a twister. So, what can you do if you come face to face with a tornado, Branyard? What's the best course of action to ensure your survival? Well, first things first, if you live in an area prone to tornadoes, be sure to have a plan. You can find suggestions on your local government's website. And if you're like Brainyard, who's only visiting these areas, watch out for days with rain and reported high winds. Tornadoes are still difficult to predict, but you can guarantee that you won't be coming towards one if you plan your excursions on a sunny day. If you're indoors and a tornado hits, move to the basement of the building's lowest possible floor. Another option is to find a hallway or stairwell. The more walls between you and the tornado, the better. You can also stick yourself under a sturdy piece of furniture. Don't forget to protect your head. It's important that you stay away from the windows in case they break or shatter. Now, if you're outdoors and a tornado is approaching, find a ditch, depression, or ravine in the ground. Lie flat and again, cover your head. We need to protect those money-making good looks of yours, Brainyard. Finally, if you do find yourself in a car, it's important that you don't try to outrun a tornado and definitely don't be like that Arkansas couple who drove into one either. Instead, drive a 90-degree angle away from the storm. Although tornadoes can veer off their straight pathway, it's unlikely that it'll take any sharp turns. The most important thing to remember in all of this is that most deaths in the event of a tornado are not not caused by folks getting swept up in the high gust winds, but rather the flying debris that follows. So protect your head at all costs and watch out for any flying bison, Brainyard. Your car's here, Brainyard. You're all set to go. Would you look at that? The
the storm is already calming down. You're in the clear. Whew. Where to next? Florida? As in another tornado-prone area? Whatever toots your horn, Brainerd. Until next time.